Thank you for clicking that thumbnail. Welcome to the solution video of this exam, which is Additional Math, Paper 12, May June 2022, Cambridge IGCSE. Question number one says the diagram shows the graph of this function where a, b, c are integers from minus 180 till 180. Find the values of a, b, c. Very straightforward. What else is straightforward? If you like this video, please share with your friends and like this video. Subscribe to my channel and I'll be motivated to make many more videos like this. Okay, so we want to find a, b, c. So let me write what they're asking. Y equal to A sine BX plus C. We should know what each alphabet represents. A represents amplitude. B is the relationship of 360 degrees. It is in degrees, right? So we'll use 360 degrees divided by period. That is B. And C is the axis, the middle line of the graph. So let's start with amplitude so that we get A. Amplitude is the maximum minus minimum divided by 2. Basically, the difference between maximum and minimum is this distance. If we half it, we get the distance between the maximum and axis or axis and minimum. So maximum in this case is 2 minus minimum is negative 8 divided by 2 so 2 plus 8 is 10 divided by 2 is 5 so a is 5 let's talk about b it will be 360 degrees divided by period for period we should uh, look for two consecutive maxima can you see here they are the maxima they are little right of each line can, can you see little right or you could have chosen the two minima and they are little left of the line exactly same little left of a line and which if we know somehow the how much is the line we'll find it so if i count from 0 to 180 i count that there are 18 lines 1 2 3 if i count all of these are 18 that means each section is of 10 degrees so if I somehow take counting from this line, okay, to this line, that will give me period. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. There are 9 sections, and each section is 10 degrees. That means the period is 90 degrees. 9 times 10, 90. And that is 4. So we got B also. 4. Now for C, Exactly similar, but the mean of two maximum and minimum. So if for mean, we add maximum and minimum and divide by two, we find their mean. Basically, we want to find the middle line. So we'll find the average of the two. And that's why we do maximum and minimum. So it is two plus negative eight over two. So it will be how much? Negative six divided by two, negative three. So we got C equal to negative 3 and that is the solution of this question. Number 2. Okay. Number 2 says given that secant square theta is x and y plus 2 is cot square theta, find y in terms of x. Recently I uh, answered paper 1313 and there also we had something similar where they wanted to connect the secant square and cot square with the help of that they wanted to connect y and x y in terms of x that's what's saying here there is exactly similar question so can i somehow connect secant square and cot square yes of course one of the identities in your formula sheet if you open that and see it will be secant square theta is also one plus tan square theta Another identity is that cot theta is 1 over tan theta. It is reciprocal of tan theta. So if I square cot square, I will square tan also. And tan square is the one which is linking the two. Okay, that is the link. 
and we will just write 1 plus tan square in place of cos secant square here equal to x. So x equal to 1 plus tan square theta. So let me isolate tan square. So x minus 1 is tan square theta. This is equation number 1. And now here is cot square. In place of cot square, I will write 1 over tan square. So y plus 2 equal to 1 over tan square theta and y plus 2 now I will sub substitute this one tan square theta is x minus 1 theta is gone only x and y left and we want y in terms of x and what will we do for that this 2 will come to the right and we'll get this one 1 over x minus 1 minus 2 and if you want to simplify further you can do that because it looks very odd kind of uh, expression here so in place of 2 I can multiply it by x minus 1 and divide also now they have same denominator x minus 1 so I can write now 1 minus 2x and this minus with this minus will make it positive and 2 times 1 is 2 so finally we're getting 3 minus 2x over x minus 1 this is y equal to and that looks better than what we had earlier okay what next question number three variables x and y such that log of 2x plus y is plotted against x square so let me plot it so against x square so x square is here whenever they say against that should be the horizontal axis and vertical will be log 2x plus y okay it passes through these two points 1 1 somewhere here 2 5 somewhere uh, here okay and I will join them with a line joint okay let me write the coordinates 1 1 and this is 2 5 find y in terms of x <clears throat> now you know that our general equation for a line is y equal to mx plus c but in this case y is not y y is log uh, okay 2y plus 1 it was 2y plus 1 right and x is not x it is x square so what will I do I will solve this thing get the simpler form make an equation with the help of this format and then I will pitch in these two variables so in this case we have two points let's find the gradient first m which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 which is 4 over 1 4 we got m so y equal to 4 x plus c now our job is to find c where is it crossing the y-axis for that what we do we just take an example let's substitute this particular point in the equation and we'll get c so y in that point so we'll write substituting 2 5 so 5 is equal to 4 times x is 2 plus c 5 minus 8 uh, let me not do directly 5 equal to 8 plus C and then 8 goes to the left side it becomes negative 5 minus 8 equal to C and that means C is negative 3 our equation comes out to be y equal to 4x minus 3 this is the general equation for this straight line but the problem is the x is not x so in place of x I will write x square let me write it here 4 is 4, 3 will be 3, equal to, and y in place of y, I will write this, log 2y plus, this is the equation of this specific straight line graph. However, they are saying find y in terms of x, but it is log y, that means this log must go. And whenever we remove log from one side, let's remove it. The other side will become the exponent of whatever is the base here and there is no base given whenever with a log no base is given base is taken as 10 
so it becomes 10 to the power 4 x square minus 3 now this one will come to the right side minus 1 okay and now we'll divide both sides by 2 so let's divide it by uh, so it will become half here and this will also become half here so whole equation is divided by 2 that's so that this goes and finally we get y equal to half 10 to the power 4 x square minus 3 uh, minus half However, if you want to be a little adventurous, we can uh, separate this minus 3. So, hopefully this will be the final answer, but I am trying to go further. So, half 10 to the power 4x square is separated from 10 to the power minus 3. Yes, when two exponents add, their bases, same base multiplies with them. So, I am... It is subtracting actually, but I'm, if I put a plus in between, it will be like this. Okay, minus half. So what do we get here? Y equal to half 10 to the power 4x square times 1 over 1000. So the new version of this solution will be 1000 times 2 is 1 over 2000. So thousand then 10 to the power 4x square minus half this is y equal to okay let's move on to the next one we have two questions here my four you go somewhere else find the value of y when x is square root 3 over 2 that means we'll have to Take help of this and let's use the simpler okay let's use this version we can use anyone we can use this or this we'll get the same answer so y equal to 1 over 2000 10 to the power 4 and x square x square means square root 3 over 2 square isn't it because x is square root 3 over 2 minus half okay so it will be 1 over 2000 10 to the power 4 10 to the power 4 now 4 multiplied by square root 3 square will be complete 3 but 2 square will be 4 so this and this cancel out minus half so that is 1 over 2000 times 10 cube now which is 1000 minus half Half thousand and two thousand cancel it becomes half minus half which is zero when x is square three over two we get uh, y, y equal to zero all right now in the second one they're saying find the value of x when y is two so we'll put this as two a uh, y is rather why do i use this why don't i use the one i got earlier this one log 2y plus 1 is 4x square minus 3 i will use that one that will make more sense log 2y plus 1 okay 4x square minus 3 this was the one now they have given y is equal to 2 so we'll put it here so log 5 yes 2 times 2 is 4, 4 plus 1 is 5. That's why it becomes 5 because y is 2 equal to 4x square minus 3. So this 3 will come here log 5 plus 3 equal to 4x square. Okay. Now divide both of them with 4 because we want to evaluate this. So this is x square equal to log 5 plus 3 over 4 and to get x we will square root and we'll get plus and minus value of x x is uh, the base here okay so let's see what I am getting from my calculator is 0 
7 and that's fine we can accept a plus and minus both because square of a negative and positive both is possible and uh, still the log will be there so it's okay to accept both answers let's go to the next one find the unit vector in the same direction of this minus 15 8 whenever we want to find a unit vector in certain direction of a vector do what find the uh, magnitude of that vector so they have not given any name to this let's call it a vector a so the magnitude of vector a will be square of square root of the square of 15 plus square of 8 that's how we find magnitude 225 plus 64 which is square root 289 and 17 17 is the magnitude of this vector and which is in negative 15 suppose this way negative 15 and positive 8 so we want a unit vector which is small the whole length is 17 units we want a unit vector which has length just one unit so basically whole vector will be divided by 17 and we'll get this unit vector and that's what it will be 1 over 17 negative 15 or 8 this is the vector let's call it this way unit vector okay now what is the second one given that they are giving this particular relationship that uh, 2a minus 5 another vector plus this b is to find the values of a and b it's their a not mine i chose this a so it's a different question it is not related to a part anyhow so uh, this is the x component this is the x component this is the x component so let's compare x components only 2a will be equal to this 2a is equal to 4b minus 2 not equal to plus there's a plus in between 4b minus 12 equal to 4 times this is equal to b minus a so what do we get here 2a plus 4b minus 12 and let's bring this also here 4 times b will be 4b but when it comes to the left minus 4b 4 times minus is minus 4a but on the left side it will be positive 4a and nothing is left on the right side so 2a plus 4a 6a 4b minus 4b okay cancel out well so we got our answer straight away 6a minus 12 is equal to 0 so a equal to 0 6a back to right side divided by 6 so a is 2 let's find b same we'll find the equation with the y component which is this one minus 5 plus 3 equal to 4a plus 2b so negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2 equal to 4a plus 8b we know a is 2 now so this will be replaced minus 2 and 4 times 2 is 8 and i'm taking it to the right left side minus 8 will be 8b minus 10 equal to 8 b and uh, divide both sides by 8 b is negative 5 over 4 got a and b both question number 5 the first three terms in ascending powers of x in the expansion of this okay here is 12 here is 3 that means they have to be expanded separately can be written in the form of this okay so we are concerned with just three of them where p and q are constants find the values of p and it is worth eight marks rightly so because we have to expand this and this simultaneously and let's do what let's find first three terms of this and first three terms of this i don't think you will cross x square both of them are numerators so uh, yeah we don't i don't think it, we will cross it so let me copy the question first 1 plus x over 6 to the power 12 let me separate it here 2 minus 3x to the power 3 and they are multiplying right now let me write first three terms up to 
square yeah if i get a cube it will not give me a square so i should not go there all right so first of all because we are writing ascending powers of x that means it should have a power zero first that's how it will become ascending and that's if there is zero the coefficient will become 12 c zero and the other term will get all of the exponents which is 12 0 plus 12 is 12 second term let me put a bracket here 12 c 1 x over 6 to the power 1 and 1 to the power 11 this went up by 1 12 went down by 1 12 c 2 x over 6 to the power 2 1 to the power 10 and close this is the expans expansion of this first three terms let's do the other one again i want ascending powers of x so i will give this as zero 3x to the power zero and here it will be 3c zero next we have rather it was negative 3x so i should have written negative here do we have a negative no okay then 2 to the power all of 3 then 3c1 negative 3x goes up by 1 but 2 goes down by 1 and uh, I wrote a multiply here no it will be plus here next plus uh, 3c2 3x square 2 to the power 1 and done let's expand this one 12c0 anything c0 is 1 power 0 is also 1 and what is about 12 is 1 plus 12c1 is 12 x to the power 1 it will be x over 6 and 1 to the power 11 is 1 plus 12c2 is 66 multiplied by x square over 36 yeah because square applies to both x and 6 1 to the power 10 will be 1 so no need to do anything okay you can write 1 just because I have not simplified others I can keep this also multiplied by this is 3c0 again 1 My, this power 0 is again 1 and 2 cube is 8 plus 3 and minus 3x will be minus 3x, uh, 2 to the power 2 will be 4. 3c2 is 3 as well. And 3 squared is 9, x squared times 2. 2 to the power 1, right? Yeah. Okay. Now 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. 6 and 12 cancel, so 2x positive yes then 36 will be divided by 6 it is 6 divided by 6 11 so plus 11 over 6 x square dot next this will be 8 this will be negative 9 36 negative 36 x 3 times 9 is 27 times 2 is 54 positive yes though it was a negative here even this square would make it positive plus 54 x square now they said can be written in the form of this where p and q are constants find the values of p and q so we have to find p and q they're confirming the first digit is 8 and yes we can get, get it 1 times 8 is 8 and now what will I do I will not write the ones which will give me more than x square okay let's go to 1 times 36x is minus 36x 1 times 54x square accepted 54x square plus 2x times 8 is 16x accepted 2x times 36 is 72 negative 72x square accepted now x times x square will be cube so no need to write it so no I'm not doing that one let's go to third one 11 over 6 plus, yeah, 11 times 8 is 88 over 6x square. 
and if I multiply x square with this x, it will give me cube and that will give me power 4. So I'm not writing any anymore. These are the ones we need. Okay, so 8 remains 8 and we got 8 here. Now 36x and 16x will be minus 20x. 54x square minus 72x square will be minus 18x square. Yes, and now we have to add 88 over 6 to this. So 16, 18 times 6 will be 108 minus 88 will be minus 20 over 6 x cube. Please, if you're not comfortable with all this, you can just use your calculator. 54 minus 72 plus 88 over 6 should be minus 20 over 6 and which can be reduced to 10 over 3. So the final answer comes out to be 8 minus 20x minus 10 over 3x cube. So we got P is equal to negative 20, Q is negative 10 over 3. Alright, question number 6 is coming up here. The polynomial Px is given where a and b are integers. Okay, complete numbers divisible by 2x minus 1. That means there is no remainder when divided by 2x minus 1. Okay. When Px is divided by this, remainder is 120. Very repetitive and common question. Find the values of a and b. So in such case, what do we do? First, we equate the divisors equal to 0. So 2x minus 1 make it equal to 0. We get 2x equal to 1. That means x is 1 half. And then substitute whatever you got into the polynomial as x. So p one half is equal to six one half cube plus a one half square plus six one half plus b. And since it is divisible by two x minus one, that means if the factor is zero, the whole polynomial will be zero because we have substituted it here. So it will be equal to 0. So what do we get here? 6 over 8. Then a over 4. Let's write 1 over 4a. And plus 3 plus b equal to 0. I don't like denominators like this. Okay, first we can simplify this. 3 over 4. Okay. Let's multiply whole equation by 4 so that denominators are gone. So 4 times 3 fourth. The 4 and 4 will cancel out, so just 3 is left here. 4 times 1 fourth is 1, so just A left, but 4 times 3 is 12. And 4 times B is 4B, equal to 0. So 3 plus 12 is 15, so A plus 4B equal to negative 15 when taken to the right side. This becomes equation number 1. Same activity with this, x equal to minus 2. So if I do x e minus 2 equal to 0, x equal to 2, not x equal to minus 2, but x equal to 2. So P2 will be what? 6, 2 cube plus A, 2 square plus 6, 2 plus B. But this is not divisible completely. They said the remainder is 120. That means it will be equal to 120. And this will be A times 6. Yes, 48 plus 4a plus 12 plus b equal to 120. 4a plus b equal to 120 and 48 plus 12 is 60. When they come to the right side, 60 minus 60. So 4a plus b equal to 60. That is equation number 2. And uh, let's multiply this second equation by 4. So first we'll write the equation number 1. And then we'll multiply equation number 2 by 4 and subtract. So equation number 1 is a plus 4b equal to negative 15. And 4 times 2 will 4 times 4 16 a plus 4b equal to 60. And now not 60, 240. We have to multiply the whole equation by 4, right? So 
Yes. So now subtract. It will be negative 15a. This cancels out and this will be negative 255. So a comes out to be negative 255 divided by 15. Negative 15. So times 105, 7. A is equal to 7. So let's use uh, this equation 1 only to get B. So A is 17 plus 4B equal to negative 15. 4B is equal to negative 15 minus 17. 32 divided both sides by 4. So B is negative 8. And uh, what were they asking? Where is A? A17. They're asking find the values of A and B. Done. A17, B is minus 8. Hence, write down the remainder when Px is divided by x. Hence, write, write down the remainder when Px is divided by x. So, Px. I have to copy Px. 6x cube, ax square, 6x plus b. 6x cube plus ax square, 17x square plus 6x minus 8 equal to 0. Hence, not equal to 0, it is px. Okay. Find the remainder when it is divided by x. So if x is a factor, can I write like this, x minus 0, yeah? And if I make x minus 0 equal to 0, that gives us x equal to 0. In other words, they are asking us to find the remainder. If x is replaced by 0, what will be the value of this? So 0 cube is 0, so this will be 0, this will be 0, this will be 0, minus 8. So the constant part is always the remainder if something is divided by x. So the answer is... The remainder will be negative 8. Okay, next. Find the value of second derivative of p in z when x is 0. That's what it means. p double prime 0 means find the second derivative when x is 0. Let's find first derivative first. 3 times x, this time 3 times 6 will be 18. And the exponent of 3 will go down by 1, so 2. 2 times 17 is 34. Exponent goes down by 1, so no need to write 1. And the differentiation of 6x will be 6. That's it. But we want second derivative, so let's find second derivative as well. 2 times 18 is 36, exponent goes down by 1, this will be just 34 because 1 multiplied by 34 is 34, goes down by 1, x plus 0 is 1, 6, its differentiation will be 0. This is second derivative and they are saying find double prime p0, so it will be 36 times 0 plus 34, this is 0, answer is 34 that is the value of p double prime 0 what next show that uh, this particular expression can be written as this and we can see 2x plus 3 2x plus 3 x minus 1 x minus 1 square okay yes we can do it so when we want to let me write them separate 2 over 2x plus 3 here then minus 1 over x minus 1 and then plus 1 over x minus 1 square. I wrote them little separate because I wanted to find their LCM and the LCM will be the multiplication of the denominators 2x plus 3 and x minus 1 square. I did not write x minus 1 because this x minus 1 is part of this so it it is not needed to be written, only this and this written, which is matching here. Okay. Now, since we already have 2x minus 3 as denominator here, we have to multiply it with x minus 1 square so that it gets that denominator and we have to compensate it 
upstairs on numerator as well. So we'll get here 2x minus 1 square minus x minus 1 is already here. That means we have to multiply by 1 more x minus 1 and 2x plus 3. So same here 1x minus 1 and 2x plus 3. And that's what we will write here x minus 1 2x plus 3 if you want to write you can write 1 here but of no use plus 1 now it has x square x minus 1 square so we will write here 2x plus 3 extra so we have to multiply here 2x plus 3 2x plus 3 and now we will open the numerator so denominator remains what it is All right, x minus 1 square, x square plus 1 square minus 2 times x times 1 minus uh, 1 if you want to write, okay, x times 2x is 2x square, x times 3, 3x, minus 1 times 2x is minus 2x, minus 1 times 3 is minus 3 plus you can open this bracket straight away 2x plus 3 okay same here 2x plus 3 x minus 1 square so we get here 2x square plus 2 minus 4x yeah 2 times 2 is 4 minus 2x square minus 3x all are changing sign because of this minus 1, okay? Plus 2x, plus 3, plus 2x, plus 3. All right. 2x square and 2x cancel out. Minus 4x will cancel with this 2x and this 2x because they are 2x plus 2x, 4x. And we have minus 4x here, gone. 2 is a number, plus 3, 5, plus 3, 8. Okay, minus 3x is the only one left. And divide by 2x plus 3, x minus 1 square. Is it matching? Yes, it is matching here. We have shown that it is, can be written as the other one. Okay, done. What about the next one? They're saying, find the integration of exactly same thing from 2 to a where a is greater than 2 give your answer in this format where c and d are functions of a all right c and d are functions of a all right so we'll because this is matching here we'll have to write the ones we had earlier so this same equation can be written as this one 2 minus 1 1 okay so 2 minus 1 1 here it is 2 x plus 3 then we have here let's write minus here x minus 1 and x minus 1 square plus here so this question becomes from 2 to a from 2 to a and 2 to a dx with respect to x okay our answer should be in terms of c and lin in terms of no no answer is in the form of this one and they are functions of a that means c and d both will contain a that's what it means all right so let's integrate since this is simply a linear denominator here and 2 cannot be part of the integration its integration will be 2 remains 2 and 1 over 2x plus 3 will be the natural log of 2x plus 3 divided by the differentiation you heard it right differentiation of content of len which is 2x plus 3 its differentiation is minus same here a linear denominator and a constant on top so it will be simply 
natural log of x minus 1 and differentiation of x minus 1 is just 1 plus okay the case here is different it is x minus 1 to the power 2 and that is a denominator we can I can write this as x minus 1 to the power minus 2 and to diff, uh, to integrate this I will add it here I will add I will write the same exponent down will divide here and will divide by the differentiation of the contents here differentiation of x minus 1 is just 1 so the differentiation becomes uh, x minus 1 to the power minus 1 over uh, minus 1 yeah plus c from 2 to a here 2 and 2 cancel let's substitute a first so uh, lin 2a plus 3 minus lin a minus 1 plus because of this minus uh, exponent I will write 1 over and oh sorry it is not plus because of this minus it will become minus so minus 1 over x minus 1 okay plus c now I'll substitute 2 lin 2 times 2 is 4 plus 3 is 7 lin 7 I have to put a minus in between okay minus lin uh, 2 minus 1 2 minus 1 is 1 well no minus 1 over 2 minus 1 is 1 plus c c and c we cancel first okay here we get okay both of them are natural logs and they are subtracting that means whenever two natural logs subtract we divide the one with positive by the one which is negative minus 1 over did I write x minus 1 it will be a minus 1 a minus 1 minus lin 7 lin 1 is 0 so it's cancelled this minus and this minus will make it positive 1 okay so we want c plus lin d c that means constant part this will be c this and this so let's write here c is equal to negative 1 over a minus 1 plus 1 and d will be the contents of lin and okay this 7 also has to merge here because it's subtracting so it will join the denominator so d will be 2a plus 3 over 7 times a minus 1 and this looks okay that will be the answer but here I can uh, make it better by merging the two fractional parts so let me write here a minus 1 over a minus 1 so that they have same denominator now we can write them together a minus 1 so this is negative 1 plus a negative 1 so we get what a minus 2 over a minus 1 this is c so we got c and d both okay do we have more yes we have more and this is about a team of six people is to be chosen from 10 people okay chosen all right two of the people are sisters okay that means two sisters plus eight more people and from there we have to choose six okay who must not be separated okay this question paper is exactly like paper one three the question the questions are matching all right must not be separated that means they should be either in the team or out of the team find the number of different teams that can be formed okay so two sisters in the team that is the first possible possibility right so they are confirmed in the team that means out of these six two seats are confirmed that means we have to select only four now more out of these eight so eight c four this is what our number of selections now second condition two sisters out of the team 
that means these two are not in fray anymore they will not be selected we have to select all six from the remaining eight people so it will be eight c six and that's the total number of combinations possible eight c four plus eight c six which is 70 plus 28 equal to 98 combinations possible okay what next it's a different question a six character password is to be chosen from the following characters six character okay digits are three letters are three symbols are three no character may be used more than once in any password find the number of different passwords that may be chosen if there is no restriction no restriction means any one can come any times you want and uh, for that we have nine of them one two three four five six seven eight nine so six characters are to be chosen once so nine p six why because uh, order is important if two x hash is a password it is different from has to x right it's a different password that means the order is important that's why we have to use permutations in this one which came out to be 60,480 passwords possible okay next the password starts with two letters and ends with two digits so right so first we have to start with two letters letter and letter then it's something and then we have to have two digits that means middle one can be either letters or characters or digits right so let's talk about these two first first we want uh, how many three or there are three letters so 3p2 multiplied by this one 3p2 and then remaining will be here because we can't use we can't use them again the, the ones we have chosen so two letters are gone two digits are gone so four are gone out of nine so remaining are five and we have to fill up two out of them so this is six multiplied by six multiplied by 20 36 times 20 7 20 such passwords are possible okay what is the next one it is normal to the curve this a point a on the curve where x is zero meets x axis at point b okay so let me draw a random curve it's not necessary that it's a correct one so, so suppose this is the curve this is the tangent this is the normal to the tangent it is meeting the x-axis let me draw x-axis with different color at B and at the point A on the curve this is A where x is 0 so x coordinate is 0 we can find y coordinate also but we'll if needed we'll do that point C has coordinates 0 3 3 natural log 2 so since it is also 0 that means it will be somewhere on this line only y axis okay so what is here len 2 will be lesser than yeah so 3 0 3 len 2 i hope you understand this is the curve this is the tangent they have not talked about tangent they are saying normal to the curve so normal to the curve meets x-axis at b that means the y coordinate at b is zero the point a on which this is tangent and normal uh, the x is zero so that's why i wrote x coordinate as zero and now they're saying there is a third point which is uh, coordinates are zero and three since this also has coordinate zero that means both of them are vertically uh, at the same place okay find the gradient of the line bc in terms of len 2 this oh no not bc this is bc 
this is C. So we have to find the gradient of this line. Okay. So if I find the equation of the normal, my plan is to find the equation of this normal and find uh, its uh, coordinate x when its y is 0 at b and I can do that. So let's find the equation of normal. Equation of normal or any line is y minus y1 equal to m x minus x1. So I told you we don't know the y here. Since it is on the curve, a is on the curve, we can find y coordinate by putting this zero in the equation of the curve, which is natural law. 3 times 0 square is 0 plus 2 over 0 plus 1. That means ln 2. That is the y coordinate here. So now, we will use this point to find the equation of the normal because x coordinate is 0, y coordinate is ln 2. We don't need y, we don't need x. Only thing we need is now the gradient of the normal. For finding the gradient of the normal, we'll find the gradient of the tangent and then we will take help of it by negative reciprocating and we'll get the gradient of the normal. Gradient of tangent. So gradient of tangent is nothing but dy over dx. That means we have to differentiate this. So dy over dx is equal to, since a part is being divided by the other, it is a rational expression. So we will use pro, uh, quotient rule, x plus 1 square. And uh, I hope you know product rule, right? This is the product rule u prime v minus uv prime divided by u square if your main function is u over v for us u is the numerator v is the denominator that's what i've done v square the denominator is squared and then write denominator as it is which is x plus one but differentiate uh, this natural log 3x square plus 2 okay so it will be 1 over 3x square plus 2. We reciprocate and multiply by the differentiation of what is it? 6x. This is the differentiation of this. Did we write v? Yes, we wrote v. Minus u. u means the numerator will remain same. So natural log 3x square plus 2 is untouched. But x plus 1, the denominator will be differentiated and differentiation of x plus 1 is just 1. Okay. Now we have to find m e equal to dy over dx at x equal to 0. Our purpose was to find the gradient of the norm, this tangent. And just plug in 0 in place of x everywhere and we'll get it. 0 plus 1 is just 1. 1 over this will be 0, so 0 plus 2 is 2, 6 times 0 is 0, all right, the whole thing is 0, gone, minus natural log of 0 plus 2 over 0 plus 1 square is just 1, okay, so we got our m, m came out to be negative ln that's it now this is the gradient of tangent we have to write the gradient of normal here and we have to negative reciprocate this one which will be positive 1 over ln 2 this is the equation of normal let's write it simpler simplified form y equal to 1 over natural two, log 2x and this negative uh, ln 2 will become positive Lintu. This is the equation, right? But our purpose was to find the x coordinate of this point, right? Because it is lying on the normal. So we'll put y equal to 0. This y equal to 0, we'll get x. 0 equal to not lin. 1 over lin to x 
plus ln 2. To isolate x, this ln 2 will go to the other side. Again, it will become minus ln 2 equal to 1 over x. To find x, this will cross multiply minus square equal to x. Okay, it is not square of 2, it is the square of whole. So we cannot uh, evaluate that simply. All right. They were asking, find the gradient of the line BC. Now we know the grade, uh, the coordinate of BC, B or C both. So let me write here, this gradient is now negative ln 2 square. And finally, we can write gradient here. Gradient of BC. Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus x1 y2 let's take y2 this one 0 or oh, let's take this number and so that it becomes positive 3 line 3 ln 2 minus 0 x2 is 0 minus minus ln 2 uh, it was a square a uh, Outside, inside. Outside was a negative, right? All right. This negative and this negative make it positive. So we get 3 ln 2 over positive ln 2 square. Whole square. So this ln 2 cancels with one of them. Finally, finally, gradient of BC becomes 3 over ln to are this thing exact find the gradient of bc in terms of lin2 okay in terms of lin this is the one gradient of bc question 10 given the simultaneous equations these show that uh, okay they can be transformed into one singular quadratic equation all right so let's uh, start with the first one so log x plus uh, i'm writing log y square this two goes and becomes the exponent of y equal to one why did i do that because i wanted to merge these two if i merge two logs if they are adding they multiply inside log x y square equal to one so uh, if i want to remove log like we did one of the previous questions this becomes the exponent of 10 because the base of log here is invisible 10. we want uh, the final equation in terms of x that means y should be eliminated so let's isolate y here y square equal to 10 over x if i divide both sides by x x transfer to the other side denominator y square now we can substitute this y square here this equation will become x minus 3 and y square is 10 over x equal to 13 so it becomes minus 30 over x equal to 13 to get rid of this x let's multiply the whole equation by x so we get x square minus this x will cancel with this x so only minus 30 equal to 13 times x 13x and let's bring 13x to the left side so what do we get let's write here finally x square minus 13x minus 30 equal to 0 and this is what they asked us to show let's see what is the second part second part says solve these simultaneous equations giving your answer in exact form so since we have already uh, mixed up the two simultaneous equation and got our this quadratic equation we can solve them now so i will use the factoring method x square 30 is divided into 10 and 3 so minus 10x minus 3x nope it will not work so we'll have to change the numbers 10 3 is not working so 15 times 2 is also 30 so 15 
x plus 2x minus 30 now it will work because whenever you do the factoring two should be negative two should be positive or all of them should be positive it's not like the three negative and one positive will not work that is the rule so x x minus 15 plus 2 x minus 15 equal to 0 x minus 15 is in both and x plus 2 so we get two answers x minus 15 equal to 0 or x plus 2 equal to 0 which is a 15 and minus 2 however if we go back to our question they have not given any uh, any condition here but this look at this log x right so if i put log minus 2 that is not possible right negative of a log is not possible so reject this answer only this is the answer so what is your answer similarly giving your answers in exact form solve that means we have to write y also and y we already know here y is 10 y square is over 10 over x and we got x equal to 15 so y square equal 10 over 15 which is 2 over 3 square root both sides when you square root we get plus and minus 2 over 3 and uh, actually uh, a negative of the again you can see if you go to the main question it is log y can you see so log y cannot be negative so only positive value is to be taken square root 2 over positive and if you want to rationalize the denominator multiply and divide by square root 3 top and bottom you get square root 6 over 3 so we got two answers x is equal to 15 y is equal to square root 6 over 3 we have solved the set of simultaneous equations solve the equation this where a is a positive integer giving x in terms of a that means it has nothing to do with the previous part all right log log no log so again we'll do the just like we did earlier they shouldn't have given similar question again 3 will become the exponent of a so log base a it is not 10 anymore they have specified x plus log base x a cube equal to 4 okay so now problem here is that we have log base a here and log base x here we can either convert it to base a or base x and since they're saying x should be given in terms of a that means uh, base let's make the base a so that it becomes a to the power 4 right so yeah so log base a x is untouched because we want base a but here it will be forcibly made base a but we can't just do it anyhow we have to compensate it by writing it log base a and whatever was the base earlier becomes this one equal to 4 all right so log base a x okay it is here can you see both of them are exactly same that means we'll do what we did in previous question multiply the whole equation by log base a x so that this one goes so the this part becomes log base a x and square because this multiply by this here in this case x and this will get cancelled out so we'll be left with only plus log a a rather a and a they are same basis so they can cancel out cancel and neutralize so we are not left with any log here let me undo everything so it will be just three yeah because this and this neutralized just three left and this log base ax is cancelled with this one equal to log base a four log base x all right now this looks very odd let me put everything to the left and then it will become a little easier to understand 
uh, please don't mind I'm writing capital and small interchangeably so minus 4 log a x plus 3 a equal to 0 square okay let's assume because doing with this will be problem so let's assume that log base x is a t so this equation becomes a new format t square minus 4t plus 3 e equal to 0 and we can factor them we'll get t minus 3 t minus 1 I'm not repeating the process again I have done in a previous question so here we get t equal to 3 here we get t equal to 1 and let's complete it here t equal to 3 t is a log base a log base a x is equal to 3 and second we are getting log base a x equal to 1 now we want to get rid of log so when we get rid of log the other side becomes the exponent of the base here a cube and here x is just e to the power 1 so I can write a we got x's in terms of a giving x in terms of a and this is what we got here all right question number 11 and the final one in this one okay in this question all lengths are in kilometers and time is in hours a particle p moves in a straight line such that its displacement s is given by this okay find the value of t for which the velocity p is zero so velocity which is ds over dt is zero so ds over dt means differentiate this are they no they are different so we can find ds over dt because they are multiplying by using product rule so i will differentiate this one first differentiation of t plus 2 is just 1 and i will not touch t minus 5 square remains what it is secondly t plus 2 will stay but i will differentiate t minus 5 square for that 2 will come in front and the exponent goes down by 1 which is 2 minus 1 1 and further we have to multiply by the differentiation of what is inside t minus 5 so its differentiation is 1 okay yeah mm -hmm. so t minus let me open this bracket now 1 is useless so t square plus 25 minus 10 t 2 times nothing plus 2 I'm writing this 2 I'm writing first and then I will multiply these 2 which will be t square minus 5 t plus 2t minus 10 so we get t square plus 25 minus 10t and 2 multiplied with all 2t square and minus 5 minus 10t plus 4t minus 20 and they say it is equal to 0 so we should write this is equal to 0 okay t square plus 2t square is 3t square minus 10 minus 20 minus 16 t 25 minus 20 is 5 equal to 0 and again factoring a quadratic we this is the third time in this paper we're doing this 5 times 3 is 15 so minus 15 t minus t plus 5 equal to 0 take 3 t common t minus 5 and uh, minus 1 t minus so we get t minus 5 3t minus 1 equal to 0 so this gives us two times t equal to 5 and t equal to one third both are positive t is greater than 0 both will be acceptable find the values of t for which the velocity p is 0 so velocity is 0 here okay on the axis draw 
the displacement time graph for p from 0 to 6 okay both the times are less than 6 so both the turning points will be there okay starting the coordinates of the point where the graph meets the coordinate axis so we have to give all the coordinates also all right so let's start with 0 uh, let me write it this is st right so s was t plus 2 t minus 5 square this was the equation so let's start when t was 0 starting they have not given anything who's in a straight line so they have not given that it was on the point or it was stationary all right so t equal to 0 t equal to 0 we'll put it here so it becomes 0 s equal to 0 plus 2 0 minus 5 square so 2 remains 2 minus 5 square is 25 that means 50 meters it was when time was 0 at the starting it was already at 50 meters away let's say 50 meters is somewhere here and this is where our graph will start then it goes away from O but at a lower do we got two turning points right t equal to 3 this one was earlier so when t equal to one third it will turn back so if it is going down or up we don't know but the value will tell me whether it is going up or down so I'm not putting the uh, point right now but yeah I will find it now s equal to 1 over 3 plus 2 1 over 3 minus 5 square 3 times 2 is 6 plus 1 7 over 3 multiplied by uh, okay it will be squared huh? so 15 14 over 3 negative 14 over 3 and that is also squared what do we get 14 196 7 times 196 over 3 and 9 27 did somebody something 18 16 no nothing getting cancelled out okay let's see what is it are they saying we have to give exact coordinates stating the coordinates or the points where the graph meets axis okay they are not so it comes out of 50.81 so little above 50 so not very very high but okay they have given x x uh, axis here x scale and our time there is how much t equal to one third so one third is somewhere here yeah this is one third so 50.81 will be somewhere here stating where the graph coordinates of the points where the graph meets the coordinate axis so we don't have to write it here so that means it went up and turned back okay now second turning point was at t equal to 5 because we have to draw up to 6 so t equal to 5 also we have to find when t is 5 we we didn't know earlier whether it's going up or down but this point 50.81 told us that it is going up so obviously it is coming down t equal to 5 so obviously if since it's going down at 5 it will be reaching lower than 50 let's see how much is that so it will be 5 plus 2 5 minus okay 0 so 7 times this is 0 so equal to 0 meters it comes to the reference point so it will reach here at 5 and turn back so okay so it came here and turned back it is not a straight line it's a curve okay now six because they say up to six so we have to find at six where was it when t was six so six plus two six minus five square six minus five is one one square is one so six plus two seven this is 50 so 10 will be somewhere here seven will be somewhere here They said, uh, stating the coordinates of the points where it is meeting axis. So it is meeting axis here. It, this one is 5, 0. And this one is 0, 
50. Additionally, if you want, you can write uh, these three point, these two points also, but they have not asked us to show. Okay. Let's go to the next one. What are they saying here? On the axis below, new axis, draw velocity time graph for P from 0 to T, okay, 0 to 6, stating coordinates of the points where graph meets the axis. Now, be very, very aware that the gradient of this will be uh, the VT graph, okay? Gradient of ST graph gives us VT graph. We are sure that the gradient at this 1 over 3, it was 1 over 3, right? Yeah, 1 over 3, let me write here. 1 over 3, it will be 0. And at 5 also, it will be 0 because it is turning. Whenever some a particle turns, its gradient is 0. That means velocity will be 0. So at uh, this, it is 0. At uh, 5, it will be 0. And uh, nothing else. Now, in uh, from 0 to 1 here, it is increasing. That means the gradient will be positive. So that means it will be a curve going down like this. Why this? Because we know it is positive going up from 0 to 1 third and reaching 0 at 1 third. So it is only possible if it is drawn this way. Right? Now here the gradient is negative in negative zone but it comes back to 0 again. That means it, it has to be a curve and it turns somewhere and reaches here. Then only it can reach zero. And then it is positive in positive zone again, increasing. So it will be increasing till six. So we can say that it is increasing till six. Not straight line, okay? It became straight, but I will undo this. Okay, now they're saying Stating the coordinates of the point where the graph meets the coordinate axis. 2, we already know. This one is 1 third, 0. This is what we know. 5, 0. This is not important, but this is where we need to know what was the velocity at t equal to 0. And we don't have the equation for velocity. Do we? No. Yes, we do actually. So, what was it? This was the one. Let me highlight it. This was the one. Yes, I found ds over dt. 3t square minus 16t plus 5. 3t square minus 16t plus 5. Minus 16t plus 5. This is the velocity equation. And we want to know the coordinate at 0. So, when t is equal to 0, v is 3, 0 square minus 16, 0 plus 5, 0, 0, that means v is 5 meters per second at this point and we will write here 0, 5. So we have written the coordinates where it is meeting the axis. Write down the expression for acceleration, d. Okay, so basically the one we got just now, 3t square minus 16t plus 5v, so dv over dt will be uh, the differentiation of that one, 3t square minus 16t plus 5, prime it. So it will be how much? Acceleration is uh, 6t minus 16 and the differentiation of 5 is 0, so 6t minus 16, this is the expression for the acceleration. Hence, on the axis below, draw the acceleration time graph for P. All right. We can see the gradient of this graph will give us the uh, acceleration graph, right? We can see that it's going down, 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 till here it is going down. We don't know where. We'll find it when velocity is changing. So we'll find y acceleration equal to zero. Let's find that point where it is turning. 6t minus 16 equal to zero. 
6 t equal to 16 so t equal to 16 divided by 6 which is uh, 8 over 3 seconds which is about how much 2.67 okay so 8 over 3 2.67 it has to reach at 0 so this is the place where it will reach 0 and it is negative zone negative and if I observe it very carefully the gradient here of the tangent is quite big here quite low and here it is 0 that means the, that the amount of acceleration here is very high in negative direction becomes lower and becomes zero so in negative direction let's say it is here then it becomes low 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 and reaches zero and since the it is constant deceleration it will be a straight line drawn okay now look at the again this one from zero now it increases goes to positive but at the same rate because it's a permanent curve so it will be in positive zone and now increasing in positive direction so it was gradient was zero here what about uh, this one at this point it is a little higher more and even more that means in positive direction it will go up up and increase and again a straight line so this is going to be the curve for acceleration let's see what they are asking after that Hence, on the axis below, draw the acceleration time graph. We have drawn that 0 to 6, stating the coordinates of the points where the graph meets the coordinate axis. That means we need to know this and this. And this we already know. It is uh, how much? 8 over 3 or 2.67, 0. We don't know this one, right? And we know the acceleration equation here. We can write here when t is 0, acceleration will be 6 times 0 minus 16 which is minus 16 meters per second square so minus 16 0 minus 16 so access we know we are not bothered about any other point they are not asking two marks two points done and this concludes our exam if you like this video please share with your friends and ask them to subscribe to this channel, my data says only 7% of my viewers are subscribed to me. That means there are many more who can subscribe. Please subscribe. That will motivate me to make many more videos like this. See you soon in another video. Thank you very much.